Welcome to Semantic System. Um, my name is Walter Digelman. I'm the CEO of the company, and I'm sitting here with uh, Manfred Hofleisch, our head of R&D, together with uh, Dr. Jim Hart, CEO of the Bio Cybernaut Institute. We're sitting here to talk about intelligence in computing and uh, what we could achieve with uh, intelligence in computing, and even if it's important to have it or not. So I will ask. Uh, uh, Dr. Jim Hart, what is your opinion on, in general, on, on intelligence in computing? Is that something we should shoot for? Is, is it really important? Well, it's essential for the future of what we do with computers. Uh, but up to now, the effort has been called AI, or artificial intelligence. One of the breakthroughs that you and Manfred have brought forward is biologically inspired intelligence. So it's a way to have the computer behave in an open-ended way the way the human brain behaves. So it's like teaching the computer how to behave more like the human brain. Now, saying that, what could be the advantage then having the computer behaving more than the human brain? Well, one example would be, say, a mentor and teacher of mine, Dr. Charles Yeager. He had 30 years of experience in reading EEGs, electroencephalograms, and he was able to take a 21-channel polygraph and make psychiatric diagnoses from that. As he got near the end of his career, people were thinking, well, this knowledge is going to be lost. How do we preserve it? So I was in a laboratory where we were using an artificial intelligence system to try and learn to make the discriminations that Dr. Yeager could do with his human pattern recognizing ability. And it was a long back and forth. They'd, he'd describe features, they'd program in, into the computer, they'd run it, it would perform a little better but not as well as he did, and so they would iterate. Now with the semantic biologically inspired intelligence, you don't have that sort of artificial back and forth. You feed the data into the system and the system learns. And the system doesn't die. That's correct, it's never sleeping. You have entered a uh, uh, work relation with Semantic System. What did motivate you um, to uh, step into the working relationship with us? My introduction to artificial intelligence came early in my first year grad student. I had the privilege of working with um, Newell and Simon. Uh, Herb Simon uh, developed the GPS, the general problem solving, and so I was ve I've been very excited in in uh, artificial intelligence for a very long time, but I know of its limitations. When we come, when I first heard about semantic system and what you guys have created, I was immediately excited because I could see the potential for being open-ended. And as Manfred so eloquently describes, the ability to project into the future, to anticipate, uh, is something that uh, you guys do extremely well and it's almost entirely absent in artificial intelligence systems. Can you tell us quickly what your company is doing and, and where you see uh, AI1, our technology, to be taking place in your environment? Yes, BioCybernaut Institute Inc., BII, like Biologically Inspired Intelligence, trains people how to change their brainwaves. Now, we operate from what we call the psychophysiological principle, which is any experience that you have, knowledge, wonder, anticipation, intuition, you have only because you have a certain pattern of brainwaves. And if you can change your brainwaves, then you can have new capabilities, new skills, new abilities. Creative people have the ability to shift between a low alpha state and a high alpha state in which they come up with their creative ideas. Some people don't have that ability. So we want to teach, and we've developed technology, to teach people how to change their brainwaves. For example, in our alpha one training, uh, a seven day training, the average increase in IQ is 11.7 points, and the creativity boost is 50%. Now, we don't know exactly which of the hundreds of brain parameters are responsible for those changes. We know that we have this training program, and it produces a result. By incorporating the AI1 system, we can begin to discover which of the brain parameters are relevant to the changes that we want to help people to produce, so we can produce them faster, more quickly. Now, for a non-experienced person, the brain parameters, the data, how, how, how would I have to think about, how do they look like? Well, if you record brain activity, a microvolt level activity, they, and if you write them out on paper, a polygraph, they look like wiggles. 
fast wiggles, slow wiggles, big wiggles, little wiggles. And so then you have to apply computer technology to find out how much energy exists at different frequencies. So we're talking about frequency and energy domains principally. But we can also have relationships between channels, like the coherence between different channels. The synchrony is also important. So we are talking uh, uh, data which are time related, time chains. Mm -hmm. So so Manfred, um, you know, I think, in, as Dr. Hart says, you know, there are patterns in there. So, so one would think, well, that's easy to find out the pattern in this kind of curves. So what makes it special um, on AI1 to find those curves? What's the difference to other technologies? The difference is um, very simple. In today's uh, information technology, if, if someone wants to find some, uh, some information in some curves, then he writes a program and then he's looking for it. And uh, we have a totally different approach. We have a neural net. If you feed this net with the curves, with your information, then the, the inner structure of the data is uh, built as the structure of the neural net and it's immediately in excess. So if there is any structure inside your data information, then this information realizes a structure in the neural net. And you can, you can uh, look over the structure, you can follow the structure, and you can analyze the structure, and you have immediately, after you import the data to the neural net, you immediately have access to the structure you looked for, or looking for. So, in other words, the system will tell me what I don't know yet, so I don't have to have a pattern I'm looking for. It will show me all the patterns which are there. And I don't necessarily, when I start, know to how to look for it or where to look for it, so that the system will tell me everything which is there. Since you are an expert and you know where to look for, so then how would you teach another person or how would you teach then our system to recognize with all those patterns which are the relevant patterns? Um, well, with the system that you have, in a sense, you don't have to do that. Uh, for example, as Manfred just said, you feed the data in, the system discovers the patterns. Now, in science, there are techniques like factor analysis to discover what are the orthogonal dimensions within a body of data. Once you have that, then you're much more powerful in doing further research, developing the applications of the technology. But that comes along kind of for free when you use AI1. You discover what the patterns are, what the structure is in the data. And in the case of, for example, uh, one of the applications that we have is to accelerate meditation. There are some states in consciousness, like samadhi and satori and kundalini, where we know some of what the brainwave patterns are, but we don't know all of them. And so with giving the system examples of this, the system can tell us what the deep structure is so we can begin to train on the full pattern. Not just now we recognize pieces of the pattern, but we know that it has more components. And your system can tell us what those additional important components are. Now, what see you... What, what is your opinion for the future? I mean, where would that lead all, you know, having this intelligence and power of that intelligence? Um, well, one of the uh, unique human abilities, before AI was unique, um, before, before uh, AI won it was unique, uh, is to do pattern recognition. And so uh, Manfred likes to talk about helpers. And so if, uh, say, CEO of a company has three or four visionaries who can take large bodies of data, recognize patterns, and then help the CEO plot the course of the company, finding those people, retaining those people, can often be a challenge. Whereas if you have AI1, these little helpers, you can feed the data of interest uh, into the computer, and then you can... Uh, cover a much wider area. For example, interdisciplinary things. Maybe you're working in biological sciences, but maybe there are things going on in chemistry or physics or even uh, uh, geomagnetics, which might turn out to be very important, and you feed all that data in, and suddenly you're working in a much larger universe. Manfred, which areas um, uh, Jim just uh, pointed to would be, in your opinion, uh, most effective for this new kind of technology? The surprise uh, uh, effect. 
you put some information in the system, you watch the, the structure and you find some 